Welcome back to a very special potential two-part episode of the Cross-Border Interviews with Chris Brown. It is our monthly entertainment rundown, and we are going to be talking about a certain subject that is happening Sunday, 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 live from Hollywood, the 94th Academy Awards. And to do that, as always, the man in New York, the man who talks more about entertainment than I do on this show, Mr. Michael Nichols. Pate, Mikey, thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor and a pleasure, as always. I'm so excited for this. I know we were talking about it before, but I have been, I've watched so many. Like, this is the first year I think I've watched, I would say, probably 95%. And by the time that this is been aired probably a hundred percent of the movies and I have so many thoughts and I need to share them with people and no one but you I can share them with because nobody is crazy like you and I well uh for those who listened to last month's uh entertainment rundown we talked about the snubs we talked about the uh the announcement of the actual Oscar nominations but today and this is the very first time I'm going to preempt this by saying this is not going to be an hour guys this is gonna be a two-part episode get ready get just buckle in grab some popcorn because if you like movies like michael and i do you are about to hear two people get very heated on some debate some categories not heated on some about the upcoming oscars and i I'm excited for this because we we have done this in the past. We didn't do it as in depth as we're going to do it today. But in the past, we did the post award ceremony shows where we what our thoughts on who won, and we might do that for the next month's entertainment rundown. But this one is who we think are going to win and who should win. So yeah. some some categories we might not do both, but there are certain categories that we will be talking about who should win and who will win, because we all know that sometimes Oscars have a tendency to just screw get the pooch on this. There you go. Get it wrong. So we are going to, on this Thursday episode, potentially Thursday and Friday episode, depending on if we can get all of them done at one, in one sitting, which is not going to happen. We're going to start with the technical awards here. And how this is going to go, and I just want to preempt this for everyone. So we're going to name out the uh, nominated uh, films in each category. So that way, you know what we're talking about. So that way, you know what you sh should potentially be watching before Sunday. And then we will give our picks and we will probably have a little discussion afterwards. Or we'll have a little discussion, then we'll say our picks, like our movie reviews. But this is more of the Oscars. So, Mikey, are you ready for the next well I know I, we talked about it briefly, but I want to kind of like throw this out there. If anyone wants to watch or play along with us, do a ballot with us and hasn't seen the movies and is like, oh shit, the Oscars are Sunday and I have three days to watch a ton of movies. What do I do? Um, I have devised, my husband and I used to do this um, when we lived in LA. A lot of people in LA like to do this also because it is a oh shit, the Oscars are here and I haven't watched anything. So you do a movie marathon Friday night after work all the way to Sunday right before the Oscars. So I have mapped out the ideal little movie marathon for you at home if you so choose to go on this journey. It starts Friday at 7, at 7 p.m. with Eyes of Tammy Faye because it's about an hour and 40 minutes. 9 p.m. because you give yourself some time in between. 9 p.m., you start the Ricardo, being the Ricardos, uh, and then that's all you do Friday. Saturday morning at 9 a.m., you jump right in with Belfast. It's about an hour and 40 minutes long. Uh, at 11 a.m., you watch Dune. It's about two hours and 40 minutes, and then, you know, you have some lunch in there, and you start Coda at uh, 2 p.m., which runs for about an hour 50. Then you do Power of the Dog at 5 p.m., uh, and King Richard at 7.30 p.m. And then on Sunday, 9 a.m., you either watch Encanto or if you've already seen Encanto, uh, Licorice Pizza, or if you've seen both of those, you kind of pick, because Sundays typically it's before the award ceremony. You don't want to do too much heavy watching because you want to you wanna get ready for your party. Um, so one of those, or, you know, you could throw Drive My Car in. And then depending on your mood at 11.30 a.m., after you've finished either Encanto or Licorice Pizza, because they're about two hours, 
that's when you throw on, if you want to watch a couple of the shorts, because some of them I'm going to talk in depth about because I really liked some of the documentary shorts. Or I Drive My Car, it's one that I did not put on this list. Uh, international films I know not everyone loves, but if you're feeling like you want to give it a shot, that is a very good one to give it a shot. Or watch a technical category. Maybe you haven't seen Cruella yet. Maybe you want to watch Coming to America. Uh, who knows? You never know. I, that could, uh, 11.30 is a good time to get a final movie in that you're like, this is nominated. I'm going to give it a watch because it's more technical or it might be something outside of my comfort zone, like a documentary. Let me just give it a shot and see. I find the more movies you can see that are nominated, the more fun you have actually watching, even when the awards are very boring because <laughs> you're rooting for things that you've seen. And that's my little spiel. And all the while, when you're doing that, listening to our show as well to make sure that you mm -hmm. are aware of where where we think you should be winning, where the what movie should be winning or what uh, person should be winning in each category. So uh, best of luck. Uh, may the odds forever be in your favor, as the Hunger Games would say. Um, but here we are. We are, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 23 categories away from finishing this up and we haven't even started yet. So let's start with that. Just like I said, today is going to be more of that technical award ceremony stuff, the visual effects, the hairstyle, the production, cinematography, animated uh, documentary. So the, this is going to be more of the technical tomorrow or later on this uh, in this episode. It might, we might try to get into the actors, but we don't want to over bombard you with a lot of information so we'll start with the technical yeah. categories and the first one i want to start with is best visual effects so we are working uh so anyone who wants to know how we're deciding what order they are in uh I, as much as i say don't use wikipedia we're using wikipedia, You're on wikipedia. <laughs> we're using wikipedia <laughs> and we're going backwards from uh best picture to uh visual effects so we're going visual effects to best picture so the nominated films for best visual effects are dune free guy no time to die shang chi and the legends of the ten rings and spider-man no way home michael let's start best visual effects what are your thoughts on these five films before we get into where we think it will land i think the fact that we do have a james bond film kind of nominated here is really cool to see because normally they just get nominated for best song and that's it so seeing it kind of creeping into other categories is cool i also really like the two marvel films here i think seeing them both on there is awesome because they did have really good uh, visual effects. And I do think Free Guy is a bit of a, a dark horse here. Like it could come out of nowhere if there's a vote split and really win it. Um, but, and you're gonna be hearing this a lot, I think Dune really has the upper hand here. It's just a visual like masterpiece and technical masterpiece when it comes to just what was happening in the film and how it was going and the visual effects that they did, specifically the special effects making people look more alien-like or more creature-like or making the planes and or the, the, whatever they're called, the flying contraptions they use. I feel old. <laughs> Those contraptions um, making their, their hovercrafts or whatever fly. I mean, it really, it's, it's, this category could easily be a toss up depending on how it goes, but I don't know. I'm going to have to stick my money on Dune if you want to. No, understandable. And I, I kind of agree with you in some sense, but I don't want to start off the show as us completely agreeing on everything here because that's not what people have come to expect from the Michael. Listen, Chris. we will argue later. I think, like I said, when we were texting today, the technical awards, I think we're going to agree a lot on. I think it's the actors and the bigger categories that we're going to fight. <laughs> So if you want to just skip like a few hours ahead or tomorrow's. No, you don't want to skip. You want to, you want a full comprehensive <laughs> look at these. So for visual effects, I'm going to have to kind of agree with you, but disagree with you in some sense. So I agree the James Bond uh, uh, introduction into this category. I was concerned at first <laughs> because I was like, okay, when you when you think of James Bond, you don't think of visual effects. And I know Daniel Craig is getting old, and he this was his last film. Like 
I just want to make sure that people are aware that you do not nominate a nominate a uh, action movie because there's visual effects in it. I I was not impressed with it. I do not think it should have been in this category. But that what would you have put in instead? I would have just put four for God's sakes, or another Marvel movie. Put Black Widow for God's sake. Something. It just, it just to me it was very much the 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 odd man out. I'm oh, yeah, just, it's definitely the odd man out of this group. I'm going to disagree with you on Doom. I think <gasps> I think it will pick up a lot of awards to, uh, tonight, but I'm going to hedge my bets. And you mentioned Free Guy. You think I, the Free Guy is going to get it? I The only reason I think Free Guy is going to get it, I think this category is the vote split category that we are potentially not expecting. With two Marvel movies in this uh, category... A lot of people are going to think, okay, they're going to split the Marvel vote, so neither one of them are going to win. Maybe Dune is going to pick up some others, so let's give it to a, another great movie, and I think that would be Free Guy. Um, just watching the movie, you 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 can tell that they did something with that movie that a lot of movies are trying to do. And a lot of uh, movies tried to do like Ready Player One. So I'm putting my money, spoiler alerts, but I'm putting my money on Free Guy to win this. And okay. it is the, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's the only category it is nominated in. Yes. And I think that's why I'm putting my money on it. They usually like to throw a lot of, unless you're Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, they like to throw <laughs> a lot of the, technical uh technical awards to one person but i think this year they might diversify that and give it to a few different uh movies so i'm putting my money on free guy to win best visual effects and you're putting it on dune you're putting it on dune i'm gonna put it on dune i really think i think that this might be a lord of the rings return of the king year and i think it's going to be a dune year just as a preface for how i voted on some of these uh oh, uh oh! I think we might. Maybe be just... we are gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will be fighting a lot of these because, yeah, I am not in the same opinion of that statement. Listen, that's the beauty of this. People come to watch us bicker. And and let us know what you think. So if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, head over to our uh, website, Facebook page, uh, Michael's Instagram, my Instagram, and give us feedback. Tell us if we're out up shit creek without a paddle, or if we were on the money. Um, I, I guess we should have mentioned this beforehand. Do we have a bet on this, you and I? Like, are we actually betting something here? Like, are we betting a steak dinner? Are we betting something to say, okay, if I'm right, I win. If you're right, is it bragging rights for a year? What is it? I figure, like, I think we can come up with something. We'll come up with something, and then we'll tell you afterwards. Um, but here we are. So one category done, and it only took us 15 minutes. Woo! <laughs> well, I think also write in if you would want to maybe do like a, a ballot competition for the 2023 Oscars. There you go. Because it's, it's too late. It's too late <laughs> for us to set one up now, but it might be fun with our viewers for next year. There you go. We'll put it on the website. We'll get you that feedback and we might do that throughout the year and see where you guys think it should go. So yeah, here we are. Now let's head to the next category. Best film editing. The nominees are... For those who are listening to this on the podcast or any, wherever they get their podcast, you are not seeing the amazing visual effects that we have created for the categories as I introduced them. So if you want to head over to YouTube, I would highly recommend you do. And then you can see the amazing graphics that we made. And totally just a picture of the movie posters for each of them. But we, we didn't are. make anything <laughs> he made. That's why he's pressing for this. Uh, best film editing and the nominated films are Don't Look Up, Dune, King Richard, The Power of the Dog, Tick, Tick, Boom, Michael, Michael, Michael. Oh, I, 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 I should have, I should just, I'm going to interrupt here for two seconds. I got some feedback at, after last month's uh, entertainment rundown. So, you will hear me switch up from Mikey to Michael. He does. He doesn't care. 
it doesn't it's not like he he tells me it has to be a certain way i just want to let people know that i'm not being disrespectful to michael when i say that or mikey i'm just it's just whatever rolls off the tongue whenever that happens so i might call him mikey i might call him michael i do apologize if someone's getting upset that i'm not naming him correctly but he has told me it doesn't matter correct yeah that doesn't matter i don't okay. care <laughs> Okay, I had people come for me last month, so here we are. Come for me. Okay. So best film <laughs> editing. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Um, why is don't look up there? Is my very first question. Why is Power of the Dog there? I can kind of see Power of the Dog there. I can kind of see King Richard there too. I think Tick, Tick, Boom, that gorgeous scene with the, the Sunday diner, with the editing, with, I think that oh, that was so good. It would have been for best visual effects as well. It should have been, but it wasn't. Um, but like that film editing, I think was gorgeous enough to put it in this category. I, 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 I mean, Dune, it's, it is the category, Dune is the category or is the, one to be in this exact category. I think don't look up is for sure. Like, why did we throw that in there? I don't, I didn't like the film editing for that. I think King Richard Power of the Dog had pretty good editing as well. Um, especially with kind of those seamless, uh, for Power of the Dog, the seamless transition of shots they did for some of the like landscaping and such, but I, I'm gonna have to give it to Dune. I'm sorry. This is what we're gonna fight again, aren't we? Two. For you're gonna say two. tick tick boom. I am gonna say tick tick boom. Two for two, and you were like, "Oh, we're gonna be all like nice to each other." I and thought th you were gonna ride the Dune train. No, I didn't like the movie. I did not like the I movie. I didn't as either, but I I think it's gonna win. <laughs> I I and if they do, then it tells me that Hollywood is just screwed up in their thinking. Now, I you agree. should already know that's the case. <laughs> now, I will agree with you. Dune will probably win. Who should win though? And this is what I'm this is what I this and this might be where I need to start clarifying myself a little bit. Okay, Dune might win. I think Tick Tick Boom should win though. Tick I'll Tick Boom's musical numbers, the editing around the musical numbers when they're singing, when the whole thing made me fall in love with the movie more than the actual script, to be honest. So <coughs> I, I think Tick, Tick, Boom should win. I hope it wins. I'm putting my money on it for it to win. And in this, this is, I should be again, clarify, I'm clarifying a lot and we're only 23 minutes into this. Um, or literally, yeah, 21 minutes, 20 minutes into this. Most of mine, I'm not picking who I think will win. I'm picking who should win. So most of my nominations and most of mine are who should win. And I think I've, I've, I've done that because I think they're the best films and the best uh, out of the category that they're in. I might, I might lose some uh, categories. I might win some categories, but I, I, I'm picking based on who I know should win. So. Michael, Michael. Okay, listen, I'm trying to win here. So <laughs> it's not about I, winning and losing, Michael. It's about how you play the game. I've won the last three years in a row with my Oscars party. So I need to keep this streak going, baby. Not against Chris Brown. Not against Chris Brown. <laughs> last year, I think I we came, I think we tied last year. I think we tied last year. Because but, it, was one of, it was one of those weird years. Um I I think Tick Tick Boom uh, has the chance to win this. And I don't know, and this is my concern. Y you mentioned earlier in a uh, past entertainment rundown that you have a friend who has the account, who does the, who not, who votes in the Academy Awards, right? He's yep. a kind of actor or actor or macro. SAG. SAG. I thought you said the F word there for a second. <laughs> SAG Aftra. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I, I don't know if they were sent out to everyone, like all these screeners. So I don't know because I know Dune has and Dune is on everything. So you can get that. I don't, I know Netflix, you can get Tick, Tick, Boom as well. So 
I would be surprised if actually all these films were sent out to all the uh, members or the voting members. Well, the big thing with the film editing, especially now with streaming, like Don't Look Up was on Netflix. Dune was on HBO and is now currently on HBO. King Richard was on HBO for a while. Now that it's in theaters, it's you cannot stream it. Um, Power of the Dog on Netflix. Tick, tick, boom on Netflix. I think when it's a situation like that, they probably didn't send screeners out for any of these. Maybe King Richard, maybe. Yeah. And that might be, we will talk a little bit later on about why that might be because uh, best actor is a category that a lot of people are watching this time. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm just being, I'm just being cautious about my picks because I'm just trying to figure out would people go out and actually sit in front of a, a Netflix screen and watch these films? They might. Uh, or is it who sent the best swag bag to all these people? So, <laughs> who, 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 who was, who was this year's Emily in Paris? That's all I can. <laughs> For real. Okay. So with that, our nominate, our, our nominations are sort of our picks are in. Oh, we yep. have, we, okay. So uh, for no, me, Dune. Dune. So, okay, I'm not doing that graphic, okay? I'm just putting another graphic with your photo beside Dune. the poster. Dune, pick, <laughs> flash, fireworks, <laughs> explosions. Jason Derulo. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so for best film editing, Michael is giving it to Dune. I am giving it to Tick, Tick, Boom. And we shall see who is right and who is wrong. And they will probably give it to don't look up for some godforsaken reason. <laughs> I hope that I hope for this one that you're right, because I did love Tick Tick Boom, but I just I don't think the it's even on the radar. Best costume design. We are three in, and then we'll take a quick break here. Best costume design. And the and the nominees are Cruella, Serrano. Dune, Nightmare Alley, West Side Story. Uh, I'm going to start with this one because she did the last two. I just want to sure. make sure that I'm saying the right one here. Totally not knowing where it is. So my pick for this is not Dune. Surprise, my surprise. Name. I... Okay, so I went back and I rewatched a few of these movies before I made this pick because I really wanted to make sure that I was doing this justice. My pick for this category is Nightmare Alley. <gasps> Wait, no, you have to elaborate. I'm shook. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, anyone who has listened to any of our... Uh, past shows knows that I am not an Emma Stone fan. So I did not like the fashion in Corella. So I did not pick that. Serrano, I <laughs> it, it, exactly. We will do we will do a movie <laughs> review on that movie later on. I can just tell you maybe don't watch that one before Sunday if you don't need to. <laughs> That's why it wasn't on my list if you wanted to do a power watch. <laughs> um Dune, I just, I didn't like the costumes as well. They were very monotone and I just didn't like the way that it was filmed. But anyway, that's here nor here nor there. West Side Story, it was colorful, but it wasn't the best. I like it. When I watched Nightmare Alley, it felt like I was in the 20s. It felt like the costumes and the production and the actual set design made me feel like I was in the 1920s. With all the other films, it made me feel like I was watching a film. And with Nightmare Alley, I felt like I was actually in the actual film. So that's why I've chosen Nightmare Alley to win Best Costume Design. Michael, what about yourself? I have to pick Cruella. And you knew I was going there with this. I, which is why I also knew we were going to fight on this. But it's also won the BAFTA. It won... Um, it's one like everything it's been nominated for, for costume. And I think the costumes are great. I will agree with you. I think Nightmare Alley was fantastic costume wise. I think it's going to come down to one of those two. Um, I just think Cruella has the upper hand just because it was so like, say what you want about like the movie, the, the costumes were the best part of that movie. I like the dogs. <laughs> the CGI dogs. They were dogs. <laughs> It was a film. Like, Cruella could have been nominated for visual effects. 
There you go. See, Oscars, call us next year. We will help you nominate these people. Um, I don't know why you think Corella was so good. Like I, the fashion, I loved it. The, the I costumes loved it. were not that good. Like the whole storyline of, oh, look, oh, we're trying to make the, the big thing. I was like, that uh, looks I, disgusting. I was, I was like, when she started showing up to these events in these gorgeous outfits, like gorgeous the new- they were trash yeah. okay we need to move on this is like too much fighting this nope. is this is yeah, this is violence this is a violence against me okay okay well you might think it's violence against you i'm the one who gets all the negative feedback because i'm attacking you too much <laughs> <laughs> i i could be wrong I could be wrong. Corella might win this. I just. But I do think it's going to come down to Corella or Nightmare Alley. Yes. I think it's going to be one of those two. And if they do split and we give it to Cyrano, I'm going to go jump off my building, my house. I'm going to go to the roof of my house. I'm going to jump. Hi, everyone. If you want to give it to the roof. <laughs> I joke. Don't don't at me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> we the three for three, and we have not agreed on one yet. <laughs> I'm shook already. I'm a little shocked, but not like so if you shocked. if you if the, can imagine what the first three are like. Just imagine when we get to the big categories when we actually really go for it. Especially the certain one that Michael and I. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna fight on best actress. I'm not even gonna like spoiler alert it. Like we're gonna fight on best actress. Yes, period. we have. Yes, we will. But anyone who's watched any of our shows knows that's gonna happen. Oh, exactly. And they both they probably already know where we stand on it, but here we are. Um <laughs> they're gonna skip that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, best actress. Okay, we skipped 20 minutes. Oh, they're gonna talk. Hold on, let's skip 45 minutes. Oh, good. Now we can go to the next one. Full two hours on just best actress, right there. <laughs> Um, but we'll be right back after a quick message from our sponsors and our commercial breaks that we have to do just to make sure that we get paid and continue this show. But we'll be right back after this quick message. Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit CalgaryCaesarFest.com and get your tickets today. Uh, welcome back after that great commercial break. Uh, thank you to our sponsors for continuing to help us continue the show. If you want, please be sure to head over, do what the commercial said, and uh, get your tickets for the upcoming YYC Caesar Fest here in Calgary in May Long Weekend, the home of the Caesar drink. So check it out. Be sure. Uh, we have a 20% off uh, code as we said uh, go scroll down in the show notes and you can click on the link and it'll take you to the event bright rage uh, Michael, 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 Mikey Mikey, Mikey, MMM I'm just going to call you different names for the rest of us so people really get pissed sure. off at me uh, let's talk uh, the next category best makeup and hairstyling this is one I am actually concerned about because I think we are going to have very different opinions on this. And I think it's going to be an interesting take. So the nominee is for best makeup and hairstyling for the 94th Academy Awards are coming to America, Cruella, Dune, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, House of Gucci, Michael, what's your thoughts on makeup and hairstyling? Um, I actually kind of really like how this category shaped up, if I'm going to be honest. I am a bit, I, I, I think that they're all great. I, I am a little shocked that it did not mimic completely costume design because they usually mimic each other um, for the most part. But I, I think with this one, 
I'm real excited about Cruella. And I think that that's going to win it. I, I also won the BAFTA. I think it's got a really good chance makeup wise, hair wise. They have a lot of great, I mean, it was a, it was a great movie about fashion. Um, I think we could also see House of Gucky get um, the win here because people are really riding the Gaga was snubbed and this is the only category it's in. So there's a really good chance they'll just give it she to. She was not snubbed. She was not snubbed. She did a bad take on that role. It was horrible. The movie I'm was I'm just horrible. saying what the general population is saying. Well, the general population needs to get their head out of their asses because it was a bad movie. <laughs> but I, I, I love it. I'm going to be, I'm going to controversial take. I love that coming to America is in this category, and I'm a little sad that it's not also in costume design. I would have put it in over West Side, if I'm going to be honest. Wow. But I think Cruella's going to win this category. Hold on, hold on. I need, I need to stop the presses, because I you think agree? We, we officially have our first agreeance on this. While I don't think it was a good movie, I think the hairstyle and the makeup were a lot better than the costumes. Yeah, I, I'm going there. I'm going there. Uh, my my runner up for this one, actually, before I even talk about my runner up, I'm going to ask the question, why the hell was the Eyes of Tammy Faye nominated in this? Makeup They were sucked. both wearing fat. They were both wearing fat suits. You could tell that they were wearing. I didn't mind Eyes of Tammy Faye makeup wise. And I think that the makeup was fine. I just don't know if. I probably would not have put this in nomination category. I don't think. I don't. I I don't. I just think. I'm surprised Nightmare Alley was not nominated in this that's what I was going to say. I would have put Nightmare Alley here for makeup and hair as opposed to Eyes of Tammy Faye, just like I would have, instead of having Cyrano in costume, put House of Gucci in costume. Yeah. So the, some of these categories that they've chosen nominees. Funky. They're a little funky. I kind of like it, though. And usually they, they try to hit close to home, but this time it's just like, okay, what's going on here? I kind of liked it. It was funkier this year, though, because like it allowed for more like and even international finally is allowed to leave the international movie category. I know we're not there yet and we're still on makeup, but we agreed. So there's not too much fighting right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, I like that now it's getting funkier. Like Free Guy never would have been nominated five, six years ago. Marvel movies would never be nominated. Five, exactly. Six years ago. I think that it's moving in a really awesome direction in terms of they're opening it up to things and they're actually kind of blending the categories um, with international films being kind of throughout this now. I, I'm glad that they're diversifying the actual nominees because you, like I can remember that the 2003 Lord of the Rings, like, and even after Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like every like every best picture was nominated for best uh like all the technical awards there was no diversion from the two right yeah. now you're seeing okay corella wasn't nominated for best picture but it did pick up a lot of these other categories uh dune was the eyes of tammy faye house of gucci randomly just picks up a nomination so i'm enjoying the fact that the oscars are trying to diversify but at the same time diversification in the movie selection is a little whacked here. And like, okay, maybe I I don't know the process of actually how they choose the top five, if it's a selection, if it's an actual vote on the nominations. So I don't know where that comes from. Maybe Mikey would be able to explain that a little bit more. They get shortlisted. So but how, how do they get shortlisted? Your, so you have to submit your movie for your consideration. Yeah. And so when you submit the four-year consideration, there then becomes a list and the Oscar selection committee kind of goes down and watches everything that's on that four-year consideration and then will make the list based on what is there. Yeah. Okay. So it's a lot of like the accountants kind of picking things in a lot of like that direction, but 
that's how it gets. And, you know, it should be a little more. I mean, the list of what's nominated should be maybe like 50, 60 movies just because like, yes, Cruella was great makeup and costume for my opinion, but it doesn't need to be best picture. Like, and I don't, I, and I think that that's the big thing. Like we have to get out of our minds of like a best picture needs to win X number of categories. Cause like the best acting performance could come from four different movies, but the best picture for overall could be one specific. Movie. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So we're locking in our picks and yes. surprise, surprise, stop the presses. The first Cruella. one we both agree on is best makeup and hairstyling will go to, according to Michael and I, Corella. Disney is going to pick up a potential Oscar here for that one. They might pick up a few Oscars and Netflix will pick up a shitload more Oscars. Shop. Best cinematography. So this category, uh, we are not, the category, <laughs> wow. It's a it's been a long day, guys. I apologize, and we're only a half hour into this, but here we go. The uh, nominee is for best cinematography at the 94th Academy Awards are Dune, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, The Tragedy of Macbeth, West Side Story. Michael, you gave a thumbs down to the tragedy of Macbeth. I can imagine that is because it's black and white, but let's talk about the cinematography. What's your thoughts? What's your opinions? And where do you think this is heading? What was new and groundbreaking about it? Like, it felt like I'm, a, I'm in film school and I'm going to make something artsy and creative. Like, they did the shot where, like, someone who's saying the lines is all the way in the far corner like at the bottom of the steps and there's someone at the top of the steps and they're in this corner and the person talking is in this corner and it's like in black and nothing about it was like groundbreaking and new i will say the witches were really cool in tragedy of macbeth i think the way they did that was really cool other than that though nothing about the cinematography felt like i was watching it, it just kept telling me how pretentious it was it makes sense that it's here because Hollywood falls for shit like that. But I, not a fan. I, West Side Story, again, West Side Story was like shot for shot, a remake of the original film. Steven Spielberg just slapped a filter on it and called it cutting edge. I don't think it's going to win. I liked Dune. This one, this is a category I had a, a bit of a struggle with because I couldn't decide between Dune, Nightmare Alley, and Power of the Dog because I thought the cinematography for all three was brilliant. And I mean, Guillermo del Toro is known for good cinematography, but I think after much deliberation, I'm going to have to go Power of the Dog. I think that it just was some gorgeous like scenery shots that Hollywood loves as evidence of Nomadland. Eight out of 15 categories we will disagree on. I, I told Michael You that disagree before. on this one? I vehemently disagree on this one. <laughs> really? Which one? I think, the think? I think the tragedy of Macbeth is going to win. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the reason I say that is um, it was a different take on the story of Macbeth, but it was also filmed in a way that maybe how do I say this it was filmed in a way for me that it made me want to be where they were because the scenery was nice the the camera angles the camera shots were great the, like the actual stage presence was great so I liked it I like the tragedy of Macbeth. I don't like the, the 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 shot for shot retelling of the same story in the William Shakespeare language, but I liked it. <laughs> All right. I did. Uh, okay, you should pop off. I mean, <laughs> I think it's gonna win this. I I'm surprised we both did not say Dune uh, as much as. I almost did, but I don't know. I, I think this is the power of the dog for me. I don't, I don't, I did not, it was just bad. Power of the dog was bad. The tragedy of Macbeth was a little bit different at least. Like it, oh, 
<laughs> I did not like I did not like Tragedy Macbeth. I'm gonna be very vocal about that. Um like I wouldn't say it's like five star rating, but I would say it's like up there in potentially Oscar contender. <laughs> I think it getting nominated makes sense. If it wins, I will be sad. You will, but you will, you will revolt, won't you? No, that's not one that I'm going to tru- jump off tru- my roof. trucker convoy all the way from New York to LA. Um, so we are locking them in for best cinematography. Michael is saying the power of the dog. Mm-hmm. I am saying the tragedy of Nick Beth. And I think I've just destroyed our, my friendship with Michael on that one. No. I'm joking. No, when you said you didn't like Corella, that did it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Are you, though? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, we are heading into our next category, and that is Best Production Design. The nominees are... I should pull this over so that way <laughs> the same as cinematography exactly dune nightmare alley the power of the dog the tragedy of macbeth west side story um <laughs> so as much as you hate at me for cinematography you're gonna really hate me for this best you're gonna production. say tragedy macbeth i am <laughs> I liked it. I liked the way that it was filmed. I know that's a weird uh, statement, but I it was a different look to the retelling of castles and all this shitty product production design. And I liked the way that it was filmed, edited. The sets were amazing and I just enjoyed it. I know it wasn't your cup of tea, but for me, it was better than the other ones that were nominated in this, these categories. I can tell you that much. I can tell you the tragedy of Macbeth for me, way superior than Dune. Okay. <laughs> West Side Story, the rubble set was weird. I did not like that rubble. Like, are we on like an apocalypse? Like, why is New York City looking like Mad Max? Um, uh, tragedy of Macbeth, I did not find it groundbreaking. Um, Power of the Dog was fine. It's a Western. It didn't feel fresh. I uh, think Dune, the, I'll agree. Dune, I didn't really care. I think Nightmare Alley, the opulence of those sets, like her office, Kate Blanchett's office. I mean, it was gorgeous. So I would, I'm going all in on Nightmare Alley on this one. Okay, well. It, it, all in. Push it, the chips. <laughs> push the chips comes up dune um no it comes up west side story my so you're so you're going with nightmare alley right now right i am i think nightmare alley is going to be shut out of this did i say nightmare alley i did say nightmare Alley. you did i did later you said it for costumes yeah I think a Nightmare Alley is only picking up one. And I know you said costumes for Corella. I do not think production design is going to go there with them, but I could be wrong. I've been, I've been known to be wrong before. Listen, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we are just putting our thoughts out there and we could be completely wrong. West Side Story could win everything. Yay. Hey. I won't know what of the uh, voters watched, but it could win everything. The Power. Maybe they watched Rita Moreno's version and they thought that that was the one that they were watching. Steven Spielberg accidentally sent those out that screener. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> were they just that good? Yeah. Um, so we're locking in best production design. Michael is going with Nightmare Alley. Chris is going with, as much as I will agree to say this, but you disagree, the tragedy of Nick Beth. Okay, here we go. Next category is Best Sound. The nominees are Belfast, Dune, No Time to Die, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. Question one. Why is the power of the dog here? That's a very good question. Question two. 
why isn't any other movie besides Power of the Dog here? <laughs> because the Power of the Dog was really, really, really quiet the entire time. Everyone was whispering. Everyone was mumbling. You had to put sound uh, subtitles on for Ben Cumberbatch's uh, uh, text. So that's my first comment on this. Uh, All right. My next, interesting to see James Bond, No Time to Die here. Uh, yeah, it is. I was actually surprised that it was nominated for this. I'm, I, when you have lots of gun firing, you're gonna and speed chases, you're gonna have. Uh, you're sound. gonna get nominated. But when you have James Bond and then West Side Story and then Power of the Dog, I don't know who was drunk pulling out these names, but this category is. I, well, West Side Story makes sense. It is a movie musical. But still, <laughs> is it a good movie musical? Listen, I think cut those bottom three completely out. No Time to Die. Well, No Time to Die makes sense being there. I think it's middle of the road for me. I think Dune and Belfast are the two that it could go either way. I'm going with Dune. Dune. Yeah, of course you are. Of You're going with Belfast? I am. I'm going with Belfast on this one. I think Dune, if it picks up a few of the technical, technical awards, like the ones that we were talking about earlier on, since, I, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, since Return of the King, there hasn't been a clean sweep of movies in these technical awards, has there? I don't think so. I think after Lord of the Rings kind of picked every single award it was nominated for up, the Academy was like, maybe we should like try not to do that. So it does kind of flip around a bit, but I think, I do think Dune could do it this year. Yeah. And I hope it doesn't because I don't, like, I, when it, when, when, when it becomes predictable like that, because the, the running joke when uh, we used to do uh, viewing parties back in college university is if it picks up a shitload of technical awards, you know, you're not winning the best picture award. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Is the very first thing I think I think it was an event in my I think it was my father that I was told that we were talking about the Oscars, and the first the first was like I think it was best sound, and it went to some uh, film that was nominated for war movie. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was Hacksaw Ridge, the Mel Gibson movie, and yep. my dad went, "Well, Mel Gibson's lost everything else." It's like, yep. Just like if you get nominated in two different categories, and if you win one, you ain't winning the other one. Well, usually when sound mixing and sound editing were two separate categories, they usually went to the same movie. Yeah, true. And now they're one category because everyone was like, it always went to the same movie. So why just not do sound together? True, true that. So uh, you're saying Dune, you're locking you're in saying Belfast. Dune. I'm locking in for Belfast. This is going to be a very interesting night if... Uh, one of us is completely up creek without a paddle and it will show us who actually knows movies better than the other person or knows the voting. Public. Let's not do that. <laughs> Why not? Um, because when you say that, we both are very wrong and then neither of us look like we know movies. Uh, we're going to do one more before we hit to our next break. So our next category is best original song. Best Original Song and the nominees at the 94th Academy Awards for Best Original Song are Be Alive from King Richard, Dos Urgantes, Dos Oruguitas. There you go, from Encanto. Thank you, Michael. Down to Joy from Belfast, No Time to Die from No Time to Die. And somehow you do from four good days. Michael, we have Beyonce, we have Billy Eilish, Reba. we have Reba, we have Lynn Manuel Miranda, we have Van Morrison, all up, all big names, all people know. This is going to be an interesting category to watch. So, yeah. for anyone who's watched the Oscars before, and if you haven't, where have you been? Why are you living under a rock? You know that the Oscars really love a James Bond movie. They I really know. love a James Bond soundtrack. They uh, Adele won for hers. 
Uh, Sam, Sam Smith, Sam Smith won for theirs. So Billie Eilish is probably the assumed front runner in this uh, category. But Michael, what are your thoughts on this? Can Lin-Manuel Miranda become the official EGOT winner that he has been so hoping to do? Or is it going to go to Diane Warren, a song sung by Reba McIntyre for Somehow You Do? What are your thoughts? I think Down to Joy from Belfast and for us, Somehow You Do from Four Good Days, I think those are just not... I think we can kind of take those out immediately from the front running. Um, I think it's really going to come down to, I don't know. This is one where I like really, I'm like still like, do I say what I think it is going to be or do I just go with like a something else? And cause I think those Uruguitas and no time to die both could split the vote. And then all of a sudden we see Beyonce when it'd be alive. Um, I could see Beyonce win would be alive anyways. I could see Dos Oruguitas win because it's Lin-Manuel Miranda and people want to give him an EGOT. Um, but it's also James Bond. And James Bond always is like the front runner and the winner. And I don't, I, I, ooh, mm, I don't even want to say this, but I have to. I think it's done. I, I do, I, I'm, I'm going to play it safe. I think it's going to be No Time to Die. It was a very good song. I also am very fully expecting for this category to lose it. What do you mean? Oh, you're expecting that if, I you, think if you lose, lose one, I, you potentially could lose this one? I think if I'm going to lose, out of the categories, this is the one I'm, one of the categories I'm least sure about. Because it could, like I said, it could be a Lin-Manuel and a Billie Eilish split that lets Beyonce win, or it could be just... Lin Manuel is his time, and he just shoots ahead. Like I, I don't know. It could go any direction. So I'm gonna have a controversial take here. You're gonna pick Beyonce. I, no. You're gonna pick Reba. Yeah. Ah. <gasps> okay. You know I love Reba, and I'm okay with that. But I, 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 I think there's going to be a massive split on this one. I think this is the one category that no one truly knows what's going to happen because let's be honest, because when everyone remembers the soundtrack to the first or um, Spectre and uh, James uh, Daniel Craig's second movie where uh, Adele did this uh, soundtrack, I can't like, if you ask my friends and people out on the street, can you, sing anything about no time to die people do not know what the song is so that's my concern with that one that people just haven't gravitated towards it now lin-manuel miranda could potentially win here it's a disney movie i think if it was a different movie than what was nominated a different song than what was nominated in encanto had a better chance this one was not the one that it was potentially be alive good song I think Beyonce could potentially win this, but I think there's going to be a massive split. Let's be honest. I, I, I love Van Morrison. I've been listening to Van Morrison every night this week because it's been like, because I've had a stressful week and I've just needed some mellow and Van Morrison does that to me. <clears throat> mellow songs do not win best original no. song. I think somehow you do. I know Reba is Reba and everyone loves Reba. I love Reba. I think it's going to win best original song. I think it's going to be such a like cluster that it's like what just happened, but I think it's going to win. I am okay. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, Reba, fuck her. Like, no, Reba is a treasure. Like, I don't know with which way this is going to go. Like I said, I think out of, this is one of the categories I'm budgeting to lose because I think this might be the end of the James Bond um, dynasty here, but I'm, I'm still going to go with a safe bet on this, I think, and stick with No Time to Die. Billie Locked Eilish in. is American, right? Yes. I think that's why it's going to lose. Adele and Sam I don't Smith know. are both uh, British, British song, British. Uh, so... 
I could be wrong. Listen, I, you picked a full oddball pick here and I'm here for it. Like <laughs> I was not expecting that to come out of your mouth. I thought you were going to say Beyonce. And I, I know we don't, I know I, how you feel about Beyonce. <laughs> and it's not because I don't like Beyonce's music. I like the song Be Alive. I just sure. preferred Somehow You Do more hey. than I liked any of the other songs. And I'm a massive fan of Van Morrison. So I thought I would have picked that. And that's what I was hedging my bets on. I was like, okay, do I go with Van Morrison? Do I go with the one I really think is going to win? Or do I think, do I go with the one that I want to win? And for this one, I said, I think sure. the one that's going to win is Diane Warren. Somehow you do from four good days. And we'll see what happens on uh, Sunday sure. night when this goes all completely shit show and we completely come out wrong. As as the famous uh, drag star Willow Pill says, it wouldn't it be funny if there's a future category where we get completely wrong? <laughs> oh. Random drag queen. Uh, game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, that is uh, locking in for best original song for Mikey. It's No Time to Die from No Time to Die, and for Chris, myself. It's somehow you do for, uh, from Four Good Days. Now we're going to be right back after a quick message from our sponsors because we have to keep on doing that to make sure that we pay our bills and we get paid. So we'll be right back after this quick break and we will return with Best Original Song and then go into some of these documentary Best Original S Score. <laughs> I meant that. Shut up, Michael. <laughs> We'll be right back after this quick messages and I yell it. Horror fans unite. The Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown is pleased to offer a free audible copy of David Mercer's newest book, Living Death, A Love Story. The book is about Nick, who having suffered the horrible loss of his wife, plays the hero and rescues Jenny from her abusive boyfriend. Deciding that he has one last adventure in him, he invites her on a cross-country road trip. Little did they know that the world, as they knew it, was ending. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca to enter into the draw. Simply tell us your favorite horror film by April 14th and be entered. Okay, welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for that brief interruption. Like the ad said, head over to our crossborderinterviews.ca website, uh, fill out the Free book giveaway where we are giving away Living Death, a copy of David Mercer's newest horror uh, uh, book. Uh, highly recommend that you do. It is the free audible book. Uh, put in your favorite horror film, submit it, and we will potentially talk about it in our Halloween edition, Halloween show. Uh, so go do it. Everyone loves horror films, I'm assuming. And if you want, head over, get a free copy of a book if you uh, your name gets picked out of the draw. And, we have seen some uh, interesting horror film movies that have already come in. So it's always great to see what people actually think are horror films and not horror films. So here we are. Uh, Michael, Michael, Michael. Best original score. <laughs> not song, but best original score. At the 94th Academy Awards, the nominees for best original score are Don't Look Up, Dune. Encanto, Parallel Mothers, The Power of the Dog. What's your thoughts on this uh, beautiful category here, Michael? Um, I don't remember. Don't look up the music from it. I'm going to be very honest. So it had, throw it out for me. It had Ariana Grande. <laughs> throw it out. We don't remember anything. Um, Power of the Dog. The music was pretty... Eh. Um, Parallel Mothers. I really like that one. That was almost my pick. I'm not going to lie. That's my runner up pick. Encanto was good. Uh, Dune was good. I think this is a Dune category. Okay. Well, if you think it's a Dune category, that's good. Now, I, I, will, I will agree with you. Um, don't look up. Don't remember the, the actual score because you have to remember. So, for those who don't, understand yeah. this category score is not the songs it's the no. background music so it's the yeah. actual uh sort of the uh i had 
the, the imperial the ambiance yeah the imperial march on uh, star wars that's the score yeah. where uh no time to die the song from no time to die is song so when you're looking at this category you have to look at it as what was the actual background music through it now yes yeah, so for Encanto, it's not the mute the singing so we're not saying we're not giving it to it because or i'm not giving it to it because you can't count all those gorgeous songs or bruno or any of that kind of stuff because it's it's not part of this category i'm gonna give it to her in Conto. <laughs> what <laughs> i am giving it to in Conto. i did not like parallel mothers i did not like the the uh the score of that, I did not like the score on Dune. I felt it was so overrated. I I like Hans Zimmer as a, a, a conductor, but Jesus, mother and jaw, like get a better like idea of what you want to do. I felt like I was listening to Star Wars all over again. So I am giving it to Encanto, Disney's Encanto. Uh, if that tells you where I think best animated film is going uh that is probably not the right guess because i am gonna throw another curveball in for best animated film i know which one you're gonna pick well we'll see when we get there um no i know which one you're picking (laughs) because we talked about it i would be surprised michael or mikey or am or (laughs) oh my god let it go brenda (laughs) okay stacy (laughs) um so I'm, I, this, this is the category that I chose the, what I want to win compared to what should win. What will win, I should say. What I want to win compared to what will win. I want Encanto to win because I think it's a good film. I think it's an actual, like the score is good. I kind of think Power of the Dog is going to win though. I know. Scandal I know that's they, they were my top two choices. I was very divided on this whole category. You were talking about a best original song about how you're divided. This one can go either way because okay. I will I've never been a voter of the Oscars, so let's just be, let's put that out on the table. Let's like spoiler alert, Michael and I are not part of SAG, so we do not get to vote on this. Yeah yet <laughs> that's true yeah there you go hey call us up sag if you want um i don't think most people care about score I mean, I, fair but okay when you're going to a movie you're not going wow that was an amazing score of that film sometimes you do when it's really really memorable what was the like, last one you did that was really memorable mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. <laughs> and yeah, it, can, was a, it, and was it was very memorable. No, it was, like, it was uh, very uh, memorable. Uh, uh, Just like Star Wars is very memorable. That was the scoring there. And Jurassic Park is a very memorable score. Mm. I, like that's, and like, Do you think not Duke, necessarily a movie, but like uh, the TV show Westworld, Game of Thrones, very memorable scoring. Yeah. Do you think Dune was very memorable? I think it was enough to win it. I, I, I couldn't, I could like, I, like when I think of memorable, I think of something I can hum off the top of my head. Everyone can hum the Jurassic Park, uh, Star Jurassic Wars. Park. Exactly. I can't for any of these. And that could become like, could be mean. And it could be because I've only watched them once and Star Wars or Jurassic Park I've seen over and over again. But I'm going with Encanto. I'm locking in All for right. Encanto. You're locking in for Dune. I have gooped, gagged, and gawked uh, Michael on this one and the last one. So here we go. It's it's not an Oscar ballot. It's, it's what is it? It's not RuPaul's Drag Race Friends Race. It's, it's not RuPaul's, RuPaul's Best Friends Race. Race. There you go. As you can tell, my mind's not working this day. Okay, our next category is. I'm just gonna pull up here because I am on a page. Best animated short film. Michael's excited for this one. Now, uh, let's so let's be upfront with everyone on this one. These aren't as readily available as some of the other Oscars nominees. Three of them were. 
Not all of them, though. But yeah, I'm saying all, no. for the next few categories, it might be harder to find these if you wanted to watch them than others. Now, yeah. Michael and I have tried our best to watch every single one of these films, but there are some that we could not find that were readily available for us to stream or buy. So I'm just putting that out there right now. We'll tell you which ones we haven't seen when we get to each category. And uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the best animated short film, I've seen all of them. If I'm not mistaken, I'm just trying to read my do quick check. Yes. So with that being said, the nominees for best animated short film at the 94th Academy Awards are Affairs of the Art, Bestia, Box Ballot, Robin Robin, The Windshield Wiper. As I said, Robin Robin, anyone knows who my dog is? My dog looked at me and said, what, are we going for a walk? No, sorry, Robin. Um, Michael, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions? What are your suggestions on this best animated short film? So... Uh... I have not seen all of Box Ballet or Bestia. I have seen the trailer for Box Ballet and the animation was enough for me to go, no, thank you. Um, Bestia, I maybe watched four or five minutes of it and said, I can't, and just stopped. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot. And I didn't like the animation style either. Um, Windshield you- Wiper. I'm going to be very honest. I don't remember the movie. I could not tell you what happened in that short film. I wish I could tell you, but I just don't even remember. Nope, don't remember. Um, So for me, it's down to Affairs of the Art and Robin Robin, both of which brought me so much joy. I loved the way, like zany, weird, like, completely unaffected affairs of the art and how it just, I love the animation style of it. Like that hand drawn, like colored pencil kind of style. I thought it was really creative. I thought it was super cool. It was just so like deadpan the whole time. And I loved it. And then Robin Robin was so cute. I think I think I'm going to give it to Robin Robin for this. I think it just was so fun and it was so good. But Affairs of the Art is just missing out by like a hair for me. Uh, stop the presses. We've got number three of the agreements here. Or number is two. Is it number of, three or number two? Number two of the agreements here. I'm going to agree with you on this one. Robin Robin pulled at my heartstrings. If you can find you. this, and I cannot remember. It's on where. Netflix. It's on Netflix. Go watch it that's it's all like 30 I can... minutes yeah it's so cute and it is one of these films that you go yeah i can see why it, it, it was nominated and why it potentially is going to pick up a win yeah. here um i didn't like any of the others i you really... didn't like affairs of the art no i oh, found it pretentious sad. Which is shocking because I didn't find it. I love it was very Willow Pill to me for my Drag Race fans. Like it was like that weird, like, what is this? Like, I don't understand what's happening. Like when she's talking about her sister, like killing the bugs and like dissecting them. I'm like, this is just weird. I love it. I think Robin Robin is going to be be the takeaway here. Um, I could be wrong. It could go to Affairs of the Heart and it could go to either one of them. And who I think is going to win and should win are Robin. Robin Robin. And it's just because it's easy. It's a quick, nice 30 minute watch. It's not like you have to think of anything. It's just, you sit there and just relax and you just take, get, get taken away on a journey. A journey. That was so cute. <laughs> um, so we are both locking in for Robin Robin on best animated short film at the 94th Academy Awards. Heading over now, we've talked about animated. Let's talk about live action short now. The nominees are Ala Kachu, The Dress, The Long Goodbye, On My Mind, and Please Hold. Michael, 
Uh, I think we said this beforehand. I think it was Alakachu that I have not seen. I haven't seen it either. So this is a category where we are making a prediction on some of the on the, uh, on the ones that we have seen. So this one could be completely up creek. As of the time of recording this, we have not seen them. That does not mean that we are not going to see them before Sunday. I'm yep. just saying as of time of recording, we have not seen all of these films. Uh, for me, and this is going to be a very quick, easy, and I have a controversial take on it as well. I don't think The Long Goodbye should have been nominated this year for this. Because it was two years old? Yes. Yes. But agree, saying that, but I think it should it's win. Gonna win it. <laughs> it's going to win it. It's fully going to win it. Like, I agree with you. I, Long Goodbye is on YouTube and On My Mind is on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So both you can find. Um, please hold is HBO Max. I'm sorry to my Canadian friends. They Crave. Well, Go to Cra- if you have Bell. Oh, if you Crave, have Crave has it. So w- Crave and HBO Max have sort of signed this weird partnership now that okay, anything that's on HBO is going to be on uh, uh, Crave. But they've also signed it with uh, Paramount Plus. But that doesn't mean that all Paramount Plus is going to be on Crave. Like evil. Okay. Um, yeah, I think long goodbye on this one. Are we going to agree on all the shorts? Well, we just agreed on two of them. So two for two. <laughs> so Woo-woo. like I said, five. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Opulence, you of everything. <laughs> Come through. Uh, so we are both logging in for <laughs> the long goodbye, a film produced, edited, and directed in 2020. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is our best live action short film. Let's head over to best documentary short subject. The nominees for the 94th Academy Awards best documentary short subject are, I just want to pull this over, Audible, Lead Me Home, The Queen of Basketball, Three songs for Benazir. When we are we're bullies. Uh, Michael, you have not seen all of these, correct? No, I have. Oh, you have seen all of these. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, I. When we are bullies is very hard to find right now. And that's what um, I was about I, to say. I have not seen all of these, so I'm going on the ones that I have seen. And the only one that I have not seen in this category is when we were bullies because I searched high much. and low and I could not find it. Um, when we were bullies, I must have caught it like the last day it was on YouTube because then the day after I saw it, it was announced on it's going to HBO Max and it like vanished from YouTube. Um, but Audible's on Netflix, Lead Me Home is on Netflix, Three Songs for Benazir is on Netflix, Queen of Basketball is on YouTube. Um, I really liked this category. I Did not like When We Were Bullies, which is why I'm like, it's fine that it's left out. It's not, you're not missing much. Um, It really, I had a hard, tough time picking mine because I really liked Audible. I really liked Lead Me Home. I really liked Queen of Basketball. All three of them made me sob. I was weeping. I was like ugly crying. I'm like, this is too short for me to be ugly crying here. Um, Three songs for Ben Ben Azir was okay. It just felt like it needed a little more time than... I think it was only like 30 minutes long and it maybe needed 30. a bit more. Yeah, maybe needed 40 or to be a full fe- feature length. Um, but I'm going to go after much deliberation with myself because this is a category. This is another one that I could see it going any direction. I'm going to go with Audible. Okay, well, I guess we have broken our streak for short subject, uh, short films. Are you picking Lead Me Home? No. You're picking three songs for Ben Azir. No. <gasps> You're picking Queen of Basketball? I am. <laughs> I loved this one, but I fully was like, they're not gonna give it to this one. But I love this so one. so let's okay. I will be up front. Uh the reason I'm choosing the Queen of Basketball because of its Canadian connection here. Uh, the okay, director, work. The director is a Canadian. He's from Halifax. He, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he went to a, a school that I went to as well. So I would highly suggest if you have the time, like Michael said, they're usually about 30 minutes long. 
if you're a Canadian listening to this or an American before Sunday, watch the Queen of Basketball. You will laugh, you will cry, you will sob, you will go, what the hell's going on here? But I enjoyed the movie. It's a good story. It's a good journey. And the director did a great job of telling the story. So that is my locked in the Queen of Basketball for best documentary short subject. That makes me so happy that you picked that one. It really does. Why? I loved that. I really loved that one. I found her so, she was so cute too, the way she kept chuckling, which is she's like, oh, and that was me. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Love it. Um, so love you're, it. you're locking in for Audible. I, it, Audible was great too. I'm locking in for the queen of basketball. And we will shall see. Go sports. Go, go <laughs> gay sports. Woo! So let's talk about the elephant in the room. The one, the category that I was the, well, I did not ever in the past watch all the movies, but this year I Documentary. Made a, documentary. And this year I made an effort to watch it because Michael and I have this bet that we are going to potentially figure out what we're betting on, <laughs> but it is what it is. So the best documentary feature for the 94th Academy Awards nominees are Ascension, Attica, Flea, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, and Writing with Fire. Michael, did you see all of these films? At the time of this, I have not seen Ascension or Writing with Fire. I don't know where to find Writing with Fire. So that's where I'm kind of stuck in Ascension. I've just run out of time. It'll be watched by Friday, but I don't, I think it's, I don't think it's going to win. I think it's going to be Flea. You think it's going to be Flea? Okay. Gay immigrant running from the Middle East. I 100% think that the Academy is going to give it to flee i liked flee i also cried watching it when michael was watching this movie he popped he, he, we, we text while we're watching movies like 90 percent of the time because we want to get each other's reactions and the first thing he texts me is like this is winning it's about a gay couple bam yeah done damn bam winning um no, I mean, attica attica I, I could see Attica winning, but I think it's going to be Flea. Number four, we are agreeing. You think it's Flea? I think it's Flea. I think it's. I think you are right when you said uh, it's because it's the immigrant gay love story. And uh, if that tells you where we're potentially not going to pick for a best anime feature, there you go. Uh, but there you go. We've locked in both for Flea for Best Documentary Feature at the 94th uh, Academy Awards. Don't worry, guys. We have two, two films left, two categories left before we uh, cut it off for this because we're almost at the hour and a half mark. And then we will jump back in to Friday's episode with another, uh, the last six categories. So Best International Feature Film. The nominees for the 94th Academy Awards are Drive My Car, Japan, Flea, Denmark, The Hand of God, Italy, Luana, A Yak in the Classroom, Bhutan, The Worst Person in the World, Norway. Michael, Best International Feature Film, what's your thoughts? Where do you think it's going to go? I have to be honest here, Luana, a yak in the classroom. I don't know where to find it. I can't find it to rent. I can't find it to stream. I just can't find it. She is missing in action. So it has not been watched. That being said, I don't think it's winning um, because I think that there's others that are just pretty unbeatable in this category. Um, I did not like Hand of God about, I got 75% in and was like, I just can't do anymore. It just kept going. Um, I loved, I liked Flea. I loved Worst Person in the World. I loved how irreverent it was. Uh, but Drive My Car was so insane. It was so good. It was three hours. And like, 
I could have done two more hours and been completely fine. Spoiler alert for anyone who's ever watched any Oscars. If your film is nominated for Best Inter International Feature Film and Best Picture in the same year, you're probably you're winning. probably gonna win Best International yeah. Feature Film. Now, when I watched Best Internet uh, Drive My Car, I was uh, taken back by the longevity of it. Um, yes, it was, same. <laughs> it was it was it was like the never ending story, but it was the never ending story, but good because it told the story and it kept me uh, uh, captivated the entire time. Two and a half hours in, I was like, is this over? Like, we have to be done here soon. No, we still got another half hour because at that time I was like, okay, I need to go to the washroom. I need to actually get up and stretch because I feel like I've been sitting here for a while, but I enjoyed it. If you have not seen Drive My Car, please, 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 before, even after the Oscars, watch this film it is a moving touching it's it is and the acting is great uh if you are a subtitles fan you will love the subtitles if you are not find a japanese translator learn japanese there you go <laughs> learn japanese go to some japanese school and learn it and there well, not go. even just japanese because not to spoil too much but the main subject is a play creator a theater creator and he fully likes to do shows with different languages. So like, yes, learn Japanese, but like there's a person that speaks Korean, there's a person that speaks Mandarin, there's a person that speaks English. I mean, it's just, it's so good. Um, Michael and I will probably be uh, reviewing that movie for the Night of the Movies movie review, uh, our YouTube exclusive. So be sure to check that out when we do do it. It will be posted on social media when we get around to it. So we are both locking in, surprise, surprise, for our fifth and final, our only or final <laughs> agreements before we wrap up here, because Best Animated Feature Film is going to be completely up creek without a paddle, and we will fight on this one, and that's why I left it for the end, that and because Wikipedia put it at the end of the today's episode. Um, so with that, we are both locking in for Drive My Car for Best International Feature Film. Best Animated Feature Film. This is the category I've been waiting for because I am ready to battle. The nominees for the 94th Academy Awards for the Best Animated Feature Film are Encanto, Flea, Luca, The Mitchells versus the Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Michael? What's your nope, thoughts? you need to go first on this one. What's you your need thought? to go first on this one. Nope, well, you why? need to go first. Why? why? I'm just so curious. I really, I think it's, I know the direction you're going, but I'm super curious. So you need to go first. Michael and I have done two movie reviews on, uh, well, actually four movie reviews on five of these movies. We have done Encanto, Luca, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon. They're all coming out later or they've been done. Uh, we have not done Luca. We might. Uh, we have not done Flea. We might do that later on. Disney has a leg up in this category at all times. The majority of the times, I should say. So for that, I'm going to say this is going to be a very split uh, movie uh, category. I do not think Encanto is going to win. As much as people think Encanto is going to win, I do not think it's going to win. Michael and I uh, talked about the Mitchells versus the Machines, which will be uh, released uh, on Friday. So check it out at two o'clock when that re movie review comes out. It is a well-liked film. People enjoyed it. I do not think it's going to win. Raya and the Last Dragon. Not going to win. No. Flea. It will pick up... Uh, uh, a, a documentary, but it will not pick up this category. I agree with that. I'm ledging, I'm hedging my bets. I'm putting all my money on Luca. On um, Mitchell's versus. Oh, I thought you were going to say Mitchell's. No, I think Mitchell's and Encanto are going to split, and hmm. Luca's going to come up the middle. I'm riding the Encanto train. Of course. You I. Are. What's your <laughs> what's what's your issue with Bruno? I don't want to talk about him. Um, <laughs> no, I really liked Encanto. I think 
<laughs> I think Mitchell's versus the Machines is a smidge too unknown for this category. It was released I think in Raya was, Yeah. And I think Raya and the Last Dragon was fine. But like, I don't think it has any shot. I think Flea getting the nomination here is really cool. Again, I think it's winning documentary and that's where they're just going to let that be. Um, I think it does come down to Encanto and Luca. Uh, but I just, I think it's going to go in Kanto because I think they, they also like to at the Oscars rub it in Lin-Manuel Miranda's face that his movies can win, but not him. Well, you have to remember, Moana did not win Best Picture, Best uh, no, uh, it didn't. And, and it and it didn't win Best Song when he was nominated mm-hmm. either. So I think if it's, if he gets nominated and he doesn't win Best Song, they will not give it to him for Best, they won't give the picture Best Picture. I think, I don't know, we'll see here. This is going to be one we're going to be splitty split on, but I think it is going in combo. I think it's going Luca. Cool. Those are our lost. Disney's in- still winning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as much as we don't want them to, it's still winning. Um, so that is our locked in ballots for our best animated feature film. Michael is going in Kanto. I am going Luca. Either way, one of us will be wrong and one of us will be right, or both of us will be completely up creek without a paddle. <laughs> a, a lot of these, it's this. I thought we were like, well, this is going to be like coming down to three categories that we disagree on. And then I told you, no, five. this is like I we are fully you. one person's going to sweep and one person is not, yeah. or we're both just fucked. Um, so we are an hour and a half into this, and I, I know as much as you, everyone loves us talking and loves hearing us chat, uh, we are going to wrap today, and we will come back tomorrow, probably with a shorter interview, probably with only about an hour interview. We won't do any commercial breaks for tomorrow's Friday episode, but as we have seen, this the technical awards are going to be very uh, fun. Intri- interesting to watch i've never actually been one to watch the technical awards because you usually don't care but now that i know i have something riding on it and uh, i potentially could win and just tell everyone i'm better at movies than michael nichols paid then i will be happy (laughs) um michael thank you for sitting with us on this thursday or whatever we're recording this and uh, chatting about the technical awards we will be back tomorrow morning with another episode of the Crossword Interviews Entertainment Rundown where we will be talking about the six main categories, Best Actor, Best Actress, Original sc- original Screenplay, Adapted Screenplay, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, Best Picture, and Best Director. So tune okay, in to... Categories. <laughs> you said six! Why am... Guys... Please tell me why I'm the one that people come for in this show. Like, Michael comes for me more. Anyway, uh, that is the crossword interviews with uh, Michael Nichols Payne and Chris Brown uh, talking about the Oscars that are airing on Sunday. Tune in for tomorrow when we finish this story up. Talk to you later, guys.